Welcome readers to the Write Project Podcast here on 93.5 FM CHMR. This is a podcast for those who haven't heard it before about writing and modern Newfoundland author culture. And today is actually a very special episode. Today we are answering one of your most asked questions, which is how long does it take you to write a book and how much do you write per day? So we've got a slew of talented Newfoundland authors on the line here, some of whom are bestsellers in their genres, and we're going to get to them in just a moment there. But first, we've got some writing news. Uh, If you're going to be in the Cornerbrook area on July 26, you should come check out Amanda Labonte at the Cornerbrook Library. She's going to be giving a talk to writing groups about how to get into writing. This is a part of the Drawn to the Tides book tour, which will be cluing up soon, but has been going on all summer, so that's a lot of fun. If you're going to be in the area, definitely come check that out. The typically bi-weekly Kit Sora contest has been extended through August 15th this time. There's an amazing picture by Kit Sora Photography up on the Engine Books website right now. It's the one with her holding a matchstick with a large, large fire behind her. And I stress Photoshop was not used in the creation of this image, which makes it ever the more spectacular. For those who don't know, the Kit Sora Writing Contest is you are inspired by the image and you write a story of no more than 250 words. So it's very much a flash fiction contest. Past winners have included Jennifer Comden, Sarah Burke, Georgia Atkin, Jeff Slade, and Peter Foote. If you are at all adept at writing based on prompts or visual cues, then I encourage you to check that out for sure. In very special news this week, The Strain of Resistance by Michelle Bryan went number one bestseller on Amazon.com this month. It's actually an alien invasion science fiction novel, and Michelle Bryan is a Atlantic Canadian author, so she's making it big on the national stage there on Amazon.com. So if you are at all interested in alien invasion science fiction, or if you would like to be, that seems like a good spot to try out the genre for the first time. But on to the question. So the question is... Is, so the question is, how long does it take you to write a novel, and how much do you write per day? From personal experience, I've liked to write about 2,000 words a day. That's a nice sweet spot for me where you manage to get into a groove and stay in it, but not get burnt out. Uh, I did that for many years, writing 2,000 words a day. I got into that groove after reading On Writing by Stephen King, in which he suggested exactly that. Lately, though, with the with the Write Project podcast and the running of running of engine books and a few other things that have always been on my plate, I've had to lower that goal to 500 words a day. First, I tried 1,000 words a day first, and then I lowered it to 500 words a day. And while I oscillate back and forth on whether or not I feel guilty about that change and lowering the word count rate, it, it illustrates the main point of whatever our authors say that we have on the line. Make sure that your goal is achievable first. That's the main thing. Whatever your writing goal is, it has to be achievable for you. So for instance, if you set your word goal to a thousand words a day and you meet it every day, then you get kind of an endorphin buzz. You like that and that's what you want to keep doing. But if you don't make it to a thousand words per day, if you only reach it till 900, then you feel like you haven't reached your goal, even though you've done better at me if my goal is only 500 words a day. It's important to recognize the psychology behind it, that if you make it something that you can't reasonably achieve every day, even if you're not having a great day, then you're going to start to feel down on yourself and you're going to get left behind. So make sure that whatever your writing goal is, that it's achievable and that it fits your lifestyle. We'd rather someone write 500 words a day and feel good about themselves and achieve that goal than to shoot for a thousand words a day and only make it to 750 and then feel bad about themselves. It's it's much more important on your psychology, which is much more important on your productivity, to just get the words out, to just make the goal achievable. If you have the time and you're just starting out, I'd say a thousand words a day is a nice goal. If you find yourself not being able to reach it, I'd lower it down to 500. 
but it's important not to do too many sprints. Like some people write 15,000 words a day and then they don't write anything for two weeks. And that, while that can feel like a big accomplishment, and it is a big accomplishment that you could set a what across the time to do that, it can leave you burnt out. And it's, it's better and it makes for a more flowing narrative after the fact because you can kind of lose where you are in those intervening two weeks. And even if you're not conscious of it, you can kind of get lost in the shuffle of the novel and where your characters are and what the time frame of the novel is and stuff like that. Uh, so it's much better to go in tiny sprints every day and it keeps your brain in it it makes it so that you know where you are and you'll find after the fact that your readers are much more engaged when you've approached the product from that way. But you're not here to ask what I think, I'm just your humble host. On the line, as I said, we have no less than six stellar authors from Atlantic Canada. First up, we have Diana Brown, author of the very recently released Saltwater Joys. Uh, Diana has a Bachelor of Arts degree in English from the University of Calgary and was born in Gander, Newfoundland. Diana, how long does it take you to write a novel? Uh, my first novel took me five years to write. Yep. Um, however... Um, That's like an elephant. It is. It's, 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 that's an elephant pregnancy. That yep. takes a long time, but it yep. comes out wonderful. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with it. My next novel, I'm hoping, I'm, I'm trying to quicken the pace, so I'm trying to, I, I write probably, I meet with um, a local author in Calgary, okay. Catherine Dell, and so we meet once or twice a week for a couple hours, and we just sit and we write and we talk and we, you know, go over ideas. Um, but I'm trying to write every day, and I'm cool. hoping by um, next year I'll have my other book. Good. By the end of the summer, I'd like to have the manuscript done, and then have that's ambitious the um, year to edit. So I found the editing cool. process a lot longer. It only took it took me a year of the five, but still, it was yeah a bigger job than I thought. It always <clears> is. Yeah. 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 Especially if if you have a good editor. Yeah. We have Helen C. Escott. Helen is the author of the widely read blog turned book, I Am Funny Like That, A Hysterical Look at Life. In her new novel, Operation Wormwood, she taps into her darker side and takes readers on a thrill ride through the historic city of St. John's, Newfoundland. Operation Wormwood will leave you questioning your own beliefs. Helen Escott is a retired civilian member of the world-renowned Royal Newfoundland Mounted Police. She served as the senior communications strategist for Newfoundland and Labrador and was the communications lead on high-profile events. During her service, Escott wrote and implemented the Atlantic Region Communications Strategies to Combat Organized Crime and Outlaw Biker Gangs, created the Media Relations Course and Guidebook used by the RCMP, and taught the Media Relations Course for Senior Management at the Canadian Police College. Before joining the RCMP, Helen worked in the media for 13 years in various positions, including reporter, on-air personality, marketing, and promotions. How long does it take you to write a novel, Helen? I try to, I put on my schedule that Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays are my writing and research days. I try to do my research on Mondays, and then I'll do writing on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And I try not to do anything else on those days. And because that's when my husband goes to work and my kids are in school, so I get those days free. And then Thursday and Fridays I'll do with the you know groceries and running around and everything else. So I try to have that time. It's not uh, always easy no. to do it. You have to be, when you're a writer, you have to be selfish with your time. And you have to uh, learn to say to people, look, this is a real job for me. Yeah. And this is what I want to be. And it's like anything. If you go to your work, you can't have your family calling you at work and stopping to do dentist appointments and doctor's appointments. You really have to say to yourself, look, if this is what I want, if this is my dream, then I have to treat it like a job. Yeah, discipline is the, the hardest part. And I think for a lot of young writers, yeah. it is a problem of it gets treated either by them or by the people in their orbit, family, friends, whatever, like a hobby and they feel like they can interrupt it and it's like yeah. no 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 and if it's if it's a hobby that's great but if it's something you really want to be it's like anything you have to focus and and i'm a very disciplined person so if i say 
you know, now having said that, you can't always, sometimes I'll just be sitting in my chair spinning for a couple of hours. That happens. thinking, And you know, I always feel bad when that happens. And but. looking at cat videos and things because, I mean, you just can't say, okay, it's 9 o'clock, get creative. Sometimes I have to, now they, having said that, I'm not sitting at my computer from 9 to 5 just writing. I was going to ask. When I say that, uh, you know, that those three days I put aside for writing, I'll spend two hours of that day walking with my dog. Yeah. And my dog's a great editor, and we'll go over ideas. And when I'm walking and I'm listening, I got my iPod on, and sometimes I'm just meditating with my iPod or I'm listening to music, and I'll find inspiration from the strangest things, you know. Yeah. And, and uh, so that means getting out and moving. You just can't sit in a chair and stare at a wall and hope to be creative. No, I, I swear, ideas... It's interesting that you say go for a walk because I find that some of my best ideas or ways around blocks or something like that come for me when I'm on a walk. And it's almost like your brain is a giant, one of those wooden mazes that you put marbles through as a kid, you know what I mean? And the, the ideas are marbles. And when you're walking, the moving of your feet jostles them. And eventually the marble comes down. Yeah, excellent, excellent visual. Because you, you do need to move to be creative. And I, you know, whether you're doing yoga or aerobics or walking or running or whatever. But my best ideas come to me when I'm walking or hiking or, or I used to run. And, uh, and that's where it happens. And then I always just, you know, jot it down on my phone or something or send myself an email about it. But, yeah, that's where the character development comes from. And that's where, you know, the ideas come from because you just can't be creative sitting here staring at a wall. I, I talk to my characters when I'm on a, a walk. And I, I'm always wondering, like, yeah. A, does that make me crazy? B, it because I have caught myself doing it out loud a few times, and Me I'm too. like, and I'm like, oh, everyone must think I'm in. Everyone I walk past must think I am just a lunatic. Yeah, I just think my whole neighborhood thinks I'm this schizophrenic, crazy dog lady who's out walking and talking to her dog. But it's, uh, but and you a, are, but and, yeah, and and I am, but I kind of justify it as this is part of my creative process. I, I I have to, and it's the same when I talk about character development. You got to get to know your characters because you can't write about a person you don't really know and you don't really care for. I I these are my friends. I think the hardest part of the writing the book was ending it because it's like our friendship is gone. I think that the dialogue saying it out loud and talking and you're almost like you're both sides of the conversation where like yeah. you're talking you're one character and then you're the other character talking and then you're this character talking and then you're the other character talking that back and forth i i think that's necessary for good dialogue because if you say something that doesn't sound natural coming out of a human mouth yes. you know what i mean absolutely and i used to in the rcp i always taught the uh, i taught the media relations course i created a media relations course for police officers and i taught it to them all across canada well. and one of the things i used to say to them was before you do an interview, you have to go into a bathroom somewhere, look into a mirror and say it out loud. Read your news release out loud. Yeah. And and or else you're just you can't have a reporter putting a, a microphone in your face and saying, you know, can you tell me what happened? Well this is you know, and you're just yes ma'am, no ma'am. They need details. Yeah. So you have to tell them the who, what, when, where, why, but you have to say it out loud because it's something that sounds good in your head as soon as it leaves your mouth, it doesn't sound that great. So it's so important to talk out loud. And it's the same with, and I think that skill helped me with the characters because they have to speak real. Like you said, you, you know, there's nothing worse than reading something or you're saying, you know, uh, this character is interviewing a fisherman from St. Mary's Bay. And then the fisherman says, Oh, yes, absolutely. This is, you know, I think this is what happened. That's not the way a fisherman from St. Mary's Bay would talk. You know, he, you have to have the dialect right. So it's very important that you develop your character's dialect. So when you develop your characters, not just about their personality traits, is how they speak, what their eye color is, what they, they, how they think, how they smell, how they, you know, you, you need to, when you're reading about this character, you your audience needs to see them they need to know them yeah no that's all fair um not to go back to the question but the writing per day thing and how much 
So do you set a word count for yourself? Because this is interesting that you do like the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday thing. Because I set the Monday to Friday thing and I swear like some days I'm pulling out my hair and I'm like, no, may, like maybe I should be writing for three days but writing more. You know what I mean? Like doing more in those three days and then taking a few days off. Yeah, I don't, I don't live by word count because I don't care how many words I write as long as I write something. And sometimes I'll just write a blog just to keep the creative process going and I'll you know just and that sometimes when you can't write the book you want to write you have to write something else just to keep your fingers going and and your your mind sharp and and that's where the blog comes in the blog is is the the short stories the one page stories that I just want to write about just so I can say I wrote something today yeah that's fair. And sometimes, too, those three days will just be research. Right now I'm researching my next book, so I'm reading a lot. So those three days are the days I'm actually doing my research as opposed to reading for pleasure in the nighttime. We also have with us Kelly Power, a logophile who divides her time between communications consulting and writing. Her work has won the Newfoundland and Labrador Arts and Letters Competition and the 48-hour Novel Writing Marathon. She is currently working on completing the manuscript of her first novel, for which she recently received a grant from Arts NL. She is featured heavily in the anthology Chillers from the Rock, released 2018 from Engine Books, as well as What's Written in the Ladies, an anthology collection edited by Bridget Canning. How long does it take you to write a novel? I haven't finished a book, but I suspect that the answer is one million years. I see. I had an interesting experience uh, over the weekend, and it's it's especially funny now talking to you about this because when I occasionally pick up Engine's blog posts, I know you were writing during November and would be like churning out these sort of 6,000 word mornings and things. Yeah. So I don't, I don't have that ability. So on Friday, I wrote 2,000 words. That's a great. And I felt really great about that. And I still feel really great, I should, I should say. I still feel really great about it. Because, because you've, you've done 2,000 words each day. Uh, no. 1,000 <laughs> words a day is about what I average. But I think part of the process for me is in writing a first draft. So I come from a communications background where the writing that I do... I come from a communications background where the writing that I do for the companies I work for, the clients that I have, before it goes out the door, has to have a particular level of polish on it. And I'll call that a first draft, but I've spent a lot of time with that particular thing. I don't think that's a good habit to have as a writer of novels or stories, but it takes time to learn how to let yourself just go with the flow and just push the story out without constantly revisiting the language that you're using as you go through and I think that's a skill that you have to develop or a habit and I'm trying to develop it now the ability to just get in there and put the story out without fussing too much over the language on a first draft okay so I don't get as many words out in a day because I'm still trying to learn that process so my 2,000 words on Friday which I'm still very pleased with when I was in the Atlantic Genre Writers Facebook group yep a couple of days later there was an author in there who I suspect had set herself to do a really significant weekend of writing. Yeah. And her comment was essentially like, oh, I only got 2,000 words out. That's horrible. But I've got the next, I've got tomorrow too. And I just looked at it and felt like the, the smallest moment of deflation. No. <laughs> no. But, but again, like I said, I'm very happy with what I did because I know that for me that's really good in this process. And this particular author has authored say four or five books oh is it me no it wasn't you it was um uh i can't call it up right now that's okay i'm drawing i'm drawing a blank but you know so somebody who's really done well developing this skill of just like i'm gonna get the ideas and the stories and the main stuff out and that's what a second draft is for go back and look at like tightening and, and perfecting and i hate to use the word perfecting but it's never perfect. Exactly. It's it, Perfection is the enemy of productivity. I completely agree with that. Just like uh, great is the enemy of good. And yes. I know some people say the opposite. Good is the enemy of great. But great, in my experience, great is the, the enemy of good. The, the focus on trying to have that perfect thing. I find a lot of authors, like, say if you wrote 2,000 words today... Mm. 
tomorrow, what a lot of authors would do in your position is to start off the day like, oh, I'm going to get back into the feeling of this and read those first 2,000 words or at least 1,000 words of it again. That's a mistake. Agreed. That is a thing of like, you're, you're going to suffer twice now where it's like, that's a second draft thing. Like... If there are problems in it, and there are problems in it, no matter how perfect it seemed yesterday, Mm -hmm. my end key is being problematic right now. So there are a lot of words that should have an N as in Nancy in them that do not. (laughs) And I'm calling that an editor problem. I'm just like, nope, don't look back. Don't, don't look back. It's going to be bad. That's a second draft, and that's an Aaron problem. Mm -hmm. Like, Aaron being my editor. Yep. Or airy, if you're using your keyboard. Yes, yes. exactly. Yes, airy problem. <laughs> My advice to authors is always to set a word goal per day that you can achieve. Mm-hmm. Consistently, always achieve it kind of thing. If yeah. your word count is 500 a day and that's all you can do with your lifestyle and your productivity goals, do that. But for God's sakes, don't. if you can only do between... 500 and 700 words a day don't set your goal to 1000 because mm-hmm. you'll be depressed every day when you don't reach it whereas if you set your goal at 500 and you accidentally go over to 750 yeah exactly uh and definitely don't set the goal to someone else's standard of what they're doing because that's and this is part of a learning curve so coming into we were talking about how long have you been writing so yes writing since you're a child but this idea of taking your writing and wanting to try and put it out there that's a new thing and when you start to do that it's amazing to me i think a lot of people think who like to be writers like well when i decide i'm i'm gonna write and i start to do it not necessarily that like i'll be published right off the bat but i'm a good writer and i can string together ideas and my grammar is good i'll you know i'll just be able to do this thing and maybe it is like that for some people but it's definitely not like that for me and i get the impression it's definitely not like that for a lot of people because there's all of this stuff to learn and as much as anything all of these habits to cultivate and habits as we know take a lot of time to develop and the one about the word count that you're talking about is is a fantastic example of that as a new writer, it's very easy to get discouraged, I find, over just about anything. Maybe that's true for your entire writing career. It is. And as a new writer, you don't even really know that writers might struggle with that problem <laughs> for, forever, being discouraged. You just feel like, why am I so discouraged all the time? So if it is this thing of, why is everybody else writing 3,000 words a day and I can only get out 500? You really have to hear from a person as you just said, or learn for yourself that, no, that's okay because that's just how I'm going to do it. And it might take me longer, but that's just how I have to do it. And it's more important that I get to do it than that I discourage myself and never get it done at all. I've gotten to a point where I can guesstimate how long a novel will take me. Like, I can look at my outline and go, okay, there are 65 scenes. And for some reason... My murder mystery books are always 65 scenes. Like, like ish. Like, somewhere between 55 and 75. Like, that's what it's going to be. And if each scene at the beginning, like the first 25 to 30 scenes, are all going to be about 2,000 to 3,000 words each. And then as it gets along, and you don't need to exposit so much to, like, introduce things, the scenes will get quicker. So those 65 scenes are going to equal up about 110,000 words, 100,000 words. Mm-hmm. I write about 2,000 words a day. Okay, we're done this in 50 days, like a month and a half to write a book. Right. And sit, go. Yep. But when I uh, started going full-time with writing, I tried to up my word count productivity from 2,000 words a day to 5,000. I was like, oh, I've got all day. I can do this now. And it's like, turns out that's not the way my body works. Turns Fantastic. Out, turns out my body shuts off at 2,000 words a day. Right. So I've had to do other stuff like, you know, publish other people's books and manage the bit to find <laughs> things to do with that extra time that I've created for myself. That's interesting. Yeah. It's it's a yeah, it's a capacity thing, I guess, and 
I don't know, maybe you can, maybe in 15 years you'd strengthen the muscle and get to, to 3,000 words or so. Who, who knows, but maybe it's just always 2,000. There was one day during NaNoWriMo last year when I was like, haha, and made it to 15,600 in a day. And I was, that was interesting. I like that day. That was a good day. Oh, man. That's fantastic. That was a bad day. <laughs> that, was, that was a, oh, I guess I should have breakfast. What time is it? 8 p.m.? <laughs> But you felt it. Yeah. Yep. The spirit compelled you. You just whoop, went yeah. on. We also have Chelsea B., author of London Calling, and John Dobbin, both of whom were featured heavily in Chillers from the Rock. Chelsea B., author of London Calling, uh, how long did it take you to write that novel? Between 30 and 45 days for a first draft. NaNoWriMo. Yes. Because that's how a lot of yours got done. Yeah. Cool. Lately, I've been scaling back my word count goal and trying to get 500 a day, but I mean, I wrote exclusively during NaNoWriMo in the past, so it's been all over the scale. Oh, wow. John Dobbin, author of Chillers from the Rock, and recently signed for his first novel. How long did it take you to write that novel? Uh, well, I can't really speak on the novel because it took me about a year to write the novel that I, I'm getting published. That's so. a decent amount of time. Yeah, it's not but, too bad. Yeah. Um, I think this novel that I'm working on now is actually going to be done before a year's up. So that's, you know. So you're improving up. your um, yeah. your output. My speed. Yeah. Um, but I try and write at least a thousand words a day. That's a goal that I set. Yeah. Um, I rarely. I share that same goal. Yeah. I rarely reach it, unfortunately. Um, last month, for instance, I set a goal of 650 words a day day because I was doing a lot of editing yep. on both my novel and some short stories that I'm trying to polish up to send off to different different things. Yep. But um, yeah, I find that when I set the goal, I find a hard time meeting that goal. Like for instance, like I said, it was about 650 and I always struggled to meet that 650 even if I wasn't, if I'd finished my editing completely and I wasn't doing any editing that day, the 650 was a struggle for me. But now this month I have a thousand word goal again. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I can meet it, but it's still a struggle for me. Yeah. You know, like, so it's whatever goal I set. It's a mental barrier. Yeah. Where, where you'll always get exhausted about 10% of the way to the barrier. Yeah, I think I'm just naturally lazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And finally, we have Amanda Labonte, best-selling author of Supernatural Causes, Call of the Sea, and Drawn to the Tides which concludes its summer-long 2018 tour next month. How long did it take you to write either of those masterpieces? Um, it depends on the novel. Call of the Sea books take long... Well, I mean, I've only written three, but drafting Call of the Sea has taken... Those books take me longer. It's just the way they are. Supernatural Causes, the first book that the series was... So the first draft that the series was eventually... Like, that got turned into serials. So they had to be kind of reworked. Um, but that first draft of for that story, I did in a month. Oh, wow. Because it just, that just burst and needed to be written. And it, it, it flowed out really fast. Cool. Yeah, so it sort of depends on the story. I try, I, I do a couple of things to try and get like a routine. I, I will do like set like a really low word count to see if I can get consistency every day. So I'll be like, let's try and do 500 words every day. Yeah. But then, you know, I will also be like a, I'll do like where I haven't been in a routine for a while and I'll just I'll need to write and I'll because I just feel like I need to write or I'll be on a deadline and I'll I'll write like you know all the words all the words like yeah. you know I'll do do like a NaNoWriMo in like August just because I need to get a book out yeah yeah so I don't really I'm not good with routine I like it but I'm it's bad hard at it. there's so I'm much so bad at it. else going on I really want one like I really want to be like a I write every day every morning with my tea at this time yeah for these many words yeah and I'll do that for like a couple weeks and I'll be like I'm amazing yeah. I'm a writer now and this is how you know this is my job and this is how it works and yeah. then I'll like totally fall off the wagon and have like a really bad month and then I'll have to like you know it just buckle down too. and meet her drives me but I need deadlines. I find I write around deadlines. If I have a deadline, then I'm writing. And if I don't have a solid deadline, then I'm puttering. You find a reason not to. Yeah. Well, there's other things. Yeah. There's so many things on the internet. There are. The internet just keeps piling yeah. up. And I have cats now. So, yeah. like, you know, sure. they nap. It's a lot of yeah. work. They nap on me. You can't move then. Nope. 
Yeah. Thing map on the keyboard, like it's. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of reasons not to write. Uh, I think the important thing to take away here, as I said before, is that you make it fit your life and your schedule. Writing is the support center for life, not the other way around. If you have any questions on that or anything that you'd like to ask our team, please let us know on the Write Project Podcast Facebook group. And until then, thank you for listening.